Hello and welcome. My name is Jim, aka Dr. Cellini, and on today's episode, I would like to start with my breed review series. I'd like to go through individual dog breeds and start talking about the issues that each breed has um, so that I can put out a little bit more accurate and unbiased information for future pet owners um, and people with pets uh, maybe of these breeds in general or who just are interested. I think this information is not as well known as it needs to be. And I think some of the issues that these breeds face um, is not really well known or talked about. Um, Sometimes the issues are really swept under the rug by people who have a financial interest in selling you these dogs. Um, And I think that there also comes up some issues with animal welfare as it pertains to some of these breeds. I think the best place for me to start with my breed review series would be the answer to the question, what breed has the most problems? This is a a question that I get asked numerous times, probably the most commonly asked question in my career. The answer to the question is very clear. There's no debate, and it's actually a tie for first. It's the French and English Bulldog. So on today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the French Bulldog, in particular because the breed has recently reached the number two most popular breed in the country, as according to uh, the AKC, they just published some data on this. Um, So with its skyrocketing popularity, um, I decided it would be most useful to talk about that breed first and because it's the breed that I see most commonly as a neurologist. So we'll get into why in just a second. So here we go. is because of its skyrocketing popularity it's skyrocketing like Bitcoin Um, but also the amount of problems that the French Bulldog endures um, and the significant morbidity that this dog uh, breed suffers from is there's no other way to say it it's tremendous so I had to look this up Bulldogs originated in about the early 1700s and were initially created as a means to perform a sport called bullpenning. And bullpenning is basically like a blood sport back then. It's pretty brutal, and I'm glad we don't do it today. But basically, it involves trying to pin a bull. That's like the goal of the sport from what I could research. Um, So back then, dogs were bred to have as strong of a neck muscle and really just the most muscle they could to try to pin down a bull. And as you can imagine, that's not an easy thing to do when you weigh orders of magnitude less than the animal that you're trying to pin. Uh, so these dogs over the course of many generations developed really big thick heads thick necks um, and they became just really like kind of upper body strong um, in order to accomplish this feat now fortunately in about the early to mid 1800s bullpenning was outlawed and these breeds no longer did that and so what the breed ended up doing was basically transitioning to companion animal life But unfortunately, from what I can tell from researching, I think what happened was that these breeds were already on a trajectory and a collision course basically to continue modifying their bodies towards what we see today. If you can pair pictures of bulldogs from the 1800s or earlier, you see a pretty big difference. One is the degree of brachycephaly or the smush face is nowhere near what it is today compared to back then. Two is their legs get shorter over time. And three is their tails disappear. Um, There's reasons for this, which I'll get into both in this video and subsequent videos. But in this video, like I said, I wanna focus on the French Bulldog because I think there's enough neurologic, spinal and brain issues that these dogs suffer from to sit and basically talk about for an entire episode. And I think the degree of these problems and the prevalence of these problems are severe enough and high enough to really warrant taking a step back and really thinking about whether or not it's an ethical pursuit to continue making these dogs at least the way they are now. So keep that in mind and let's get into some of the information in regards to French Bulldogs. 
So guys, the first thing I want to talk about as it relates to French Bulldog spines is the fact that they are so commonly malformed. Multiple studies have been done looking at the prevalence of spinal malformations in Bulldogs and other breeds, um, but French Bulldogs in particular, depending on the study that you read, have a prevalence of spinal malformation um, between 78 and 93 percent. In other words, some studies have found that 93 percent of French Bulldogs have some form of a thoracic spinal malformation, meaning the vertebrae in their spine are not normal, and this results in an abnormal curvature. So if you look here, this is an x-ray of a normal dog thoracic spine. You see the shoulders on this side, and you see the direction kind of towards the tail going from left to right. You see the heart there, the lungs, but look at the actual vertebrae themselves, those little rectangles. Um, those vertebrae line up with each other and you can draw the canal where the spinal cord runs um, over those vertebrae and there's really not much curvature. You see this line kind of just kind of takes a little bit of an upward slope but it's really not bad. Now let's compare that to a French Bulldog as you see here. Um, this is extremely common. I can't recall a time where I've seen a French Bulldog have a totally normal spine. So this is oftentimes what we see when we x-ray French Bulldogs. And this happens when we x-ray French Bulldogs for non-neurologic reasons, just incidental findings. I think it says a lot that at their baseline, they have such a prevalence of a spinal malformation. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, if they're not symptomatic, then what does it matter if they're just malformed? I would have two responses to that statement. One, is I don't think you really know that they're truly asymptomatic. And I think if you talk to anybody with scoliosis or kyphosis, which is what these malformations are, they'd probably tell you that they suffer from some degree of back pain many times, even though we're not walking around appreciating them actively in pain. I, I can't imagine that being a comfortable condition. And I think if you asked a French bulldog if they could talk to you and you said, hey, would you prefer your spine be malformed or would you like it to be uh, normal? I'm pretty sure they would choose normal. Second. I don't think people really recognize what pain looks like in French Bulldogs in particular. They can be a very stoic breed and they, they're very difficult to elicit pain signs from a lot of the time. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen a French Bulldog who is coming to me for acting funny, but in actuality they're in severe spinal pain when you look very closely. So I don't think people actually recognize what this problem looks like in French Bulldogs to begin, to begin with. The other thing that has been shown in studies is that dogs with kyphosis and scoliosis, again, that's the curvature of the spine, seem to have a higher incidence of disc herniation. And a disc herniation in particular French Bulldogs, as most veterinary surgeons and neurologists will tell you, can be a devastating condition. Um, French Bulldogs are tied with dachshunds in my clinical experience. Um, as the highest prevalence, meaning the, the most common breeds that we see for disc herniations. Um, disc herniations can be relatively mild, where they just cause pain and that's it, and they get better with medicine. But so often in French Bulldogs, uh, they cause paralysis, back pain. Sometimes these deficits can be permanent. And there's even a situation called myelomalacia that can develop after French Bulldogs herniate a disc, and that is fatal that they can literally die from a disc herniation. What happens is the spinal cord starts to degenerate and that degeneration travels up their spinal cord and kills them. Um, you oftentimes will recognize it and recommend humane euthanasia before that happens. But I've seen, and I think every veterinary neurologist will tell you the same thing, I've seen more than a handful of French Bulldogs die from a disc herniation in their back, okay? So the fact that they can be they're so oftentimes born with a spinal malformation, again, between about 80 to 93% of the time they have a spinal malformation. Having these spinal malformations can predispose you to having a disc herniation, and a disc herniation can kill you, if not overtly paralyze you, if you're a French Bulldog. I think that where we're starting from in this breed uh, is enough on its own to take a serious step back and say, okay, what are we doing in creating this breed still? but it certainly doesn't end there. So let's get into some of the other issues that they have in their spine. Recently, researchers out of UC Davis discovered a mutation causing chondrodystrophy, or CDDY, uh, that is responsible for both a short-legged phenotype, 
So think of breeds like beagles, French bulldogs, dachshunds, all sorts of different breeds that have short legs. Um, but also, not just that, but the genetic mutation causes premature degeneration of the intervertebral discs. And that has been found to greatly increase the odds of having a significant disc herniation. What UC Davis has also discovered is that this allele, this genetic mutation, has about a 90% prevalence in French Bulldogs. Again, this is totally separate from the spinal malformations I mentioned earlier. This is a completely separate mutation that is a 90%, it has a 90% prevalence in the genetic pool, if you will, of French Bulldogs. Um, there's a genetic test for this, but importantly, it, it, this is very important, the chondrodysplasia or CDDY mutation is autosomal dominant, meaning you only need one copy of this mutation to exert an effect and place you at an increased risk for a disc herniation. So that's very important because if you are to find French Bulldogs to breed, you would ideally breed dogs that have a normal phenotype, meaning they don't have any of this mutation. The problem is with a 90% prevalence in the breed, where are you going to find these dogs? So ideally what French Bulldog and other breed uh, breeders should be doing is genetic testing French Bulldogs to determine that their studs and bitches, yes, that is the proper terminology for all this, I'm not being silly, um, but what they should be doing is testing their studs and bitches to make sure that they are of a normal phenotype. They don't have chondrodysplasia. But that's not the only mutation that has been found in French Bulldogs at a high frequency. Now let's turn our attention to Robinow syndrome. So now let's turn our attention to another mutation in what's called the disheveled 2 gene. This gene was recently discovered as a seemingly fixed mutation in the breed. A paper uh, recently evaluated the genomes of 100 dog breeds and every French Bulldog that they evaluated had a mutation uh, in this gene. It's called the disheveled 2 gene. Why is this gene important? Well, in people, this mutation in the disheveled uh, genes leads to a condition called Robinow syndrome. And Robinow syndrome is a very serious problem. It's also very rare um, from the research that I could find. Robinow syndrome creates features in people that is in many ways identical to a French bulldog. So if we look at images of people next to French Bulldogs, people with Robinow syndrome, I, I don't think, I think the similarities are there. I think you're just kidding yourself if you think that this is pure coincidence. So to summarize, we have a breed with a very high frequency of chondrodystrophy, which will place them at a very high increased risk of a disc herniation, which can be fatal or result in uh, permanent paralysis. We have a breed that has a fixed mutation in the disheveled gene, which creates what is essentially Robinow syndrome in dogs. And we have a breed that has a very high frequency of malformations of their spine. So as if the spinal issues weren't enough, French Bulldogs are at a much higher risk of a malignant form of brain cancer called glioma. The reason they're at such a high risk is because the genetics that are required to make the smush face, the brachycephaly, um, unfortunately also predispose them to developing gliomas. It's a genetics thing. So not only do we have a breed that has inherent spinal malformations at its base, just they come out with malformed spine, they're at a significant higher risk of a disc herniation, which can be fatal or result in paralysis. There can oftentimes more than one disc, her disc can herniate in their spine. We have a breed that has inherent Robinow syndrome, but now we also have a breed that is at a high risk of glioma relative to other to other breeds. So how many how many issues can we put on these poor animals? I think this is enough. Now you may be thinking to yourself right now, yeah, lots of breeds have problems. Dobermans have heart disease, Cavaliers have heart disease, Chiari malformation. Lots of dogs suffer from serious issues. That's certainly true. But what I think sets French Bulldogs apart is the extreme body malformations that we as a society find cute and frankly the, the amount of morbidity that these dogs suffer from. I mentioned the spinal issues and the prevalence of disc herniations already, but these dogs also have compromised upper airways. 
their noses are smooshed in, their soft palates are elongated, and frankly, they're not able to breathe normally. So I think what sets this breed apart from, say, a German Shepherd, who has lots of problems of its own, and I'll cover that in a separate video, but a German Shepherd can breathe normally, okay? A German Shepherd d is able to swim and run and, en and enjoy a mobile quality of life. Um, you know, that obviously gets changed over time if they develop spinal issues or hip issues and things of that nature, but a German Shepherd can breathe, okay? What I think sets French Bulldogs apart is, a, is the combination of problems and multiple systems that, that are by default abnormal. There isn't a disease that necessarily needs to happen for them to suffer. They come out and are malformed to start with. Again, with their spines, their limbs, their airways, oftentimes their GI tracts, their brains. Um, but it's the baseline phenotype that is so malformed and abnormal with French Bulldogs that I think we as a society really need to take a step back and ask ourselves, is this really an ethical pursuit to continue creating these dogs? They can't even reproduce on their own. Their skulls are too big and they too oftentimes, some studies have shown over 80% need a cesarean section to actually give birth. So they can't even reproduce on their own because of how malformed we've created them through artificial selection. Now you may be asking yourself, well, what are we supposed to do? Just let all the French Bulldogs die? No, obviously I'm not saying that. But what we should do is start changing this breed. We need to start changing its shape. We need to bring its nose back, elongate it. We need to bring its tail back. We need to elongate the spine and elongate the limbs. That will start to resolve many of these issues in morbidity that these dogs suffer from. The problem is, and this is where you run into breeder and purist, breed purists, is you need to start outcrossing these dogs, meaning you need to start mixing French Bulldogs with dogs that are not so malformed. They're dogs that are not Bulldogs, frankly. One issue in particular that we're going to run into is the breed standard. If you look on the AKC website, they list the breed standard as having an extremely short nose. That's terrible. You shouldn't have an extreme anything in regards to a dog's body. I, I think that's absolutely terrible that the AKC champions this. And in fact, if you look closely at dogs at uh, dog shows like the Westminster Dog Show in 2020, you'll see plenty of examples of dogs with hardly any uh, nares or nostrils. Um, they're, they're very stenotic. And I'll get into that in, the, in my second video as well. But this is just another example of how malformations are actually championed as just kind of what they are and what they should be. So oftentimes family and friends will ask me, you know, what type of dog should I get? And they'll ask me, I've been asked many times recently, should I get a French Bulldog? My answer to them is no. I don't think we should support at this time the production, the creation, and frankly the French Bulldog breeding industry um, in order to create animals who have just plain and simply too much inherent suffering. There, there is just too much sickness involved with this breed for me as a veterinarian to in good conscience recommend to family and friends or otherwise that they get one and continue to support the creation of these poor animals. Not until these features, these issues with these dogs are corrected. The only way to do that is probably going to be outcrossing or trying to find French Bulldogs with longer muzzles and tails, things like that, to try to breed and basically try to change the breed standard. All right, so I hope you enjoyed or at least got a little bit educated as far as the problems facing the French Bulldog. Um, again, I don't want to come off that I hate these animals or anything like that individually. I feel terrible for them. I hate the suffering that they go through. I treat them all the time. I see them all the time. They're the most common breed that I encounter uh, in my practice, and it's really not even close. Um, but again, I, I want to be very clear that I, I'm not in any way hating on a breed or anything like that. I'm, I'm hating on the amount of suffering that they go through, and I think that they suffer more than most other breeds. I think they're tied with English Bulldogs, if I had, this, if I had to kind of create a list. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any strong opinion on this matter. 
Uh, I know this is kind of a hot button issue with the veterinary and breeding community, uh, but feel free to leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for part two. Time before you go.